Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast, YouTube edition. I'm your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to join two ropes together. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts, so stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right, well, thank you very much for tuning into today's episode. Um, I really appreciate it. So today we are talking about joining two ropes together, okay? As you can see here, this rope is not very long and it doesn't get us to our uh, final destination. All right, so I'm gonna end up having to tie these two ropes together. Now, obviously in the rope access industry and the fire rescue industry, we don't have too many situations where we have two different diameters. So keep that in mind that we're not talking about tying two ropes together of different diameters. We're talking about tying two ropes together of the same diameter. Now, um, you know, say that you're on a job and you have to do a really long descent. All right. And unfortunately the company you work for doesn't have ropes that are long enough. All right. So <clears throat> unfortunately you're going to be stuck having to tie multiple ropes together. Now, when you tie ropes together with knots, you inherently increase, um, the danger of doing the job. Okay. It, it um, hinders the rescue. All right. Also, it depends on who you have on your, on your crew. If you want them to be in that kind of a position. All right. If you have a brand new technician, maybe not necessarily the job for them. Um, a great learning experience for sure, but not necessarily the best job for them to kind of cut their teeth. Okay. Um, so when you implement knots, you implement an additional hazard. Okay. So when you're, we're working on jobs, make sure you're planning for that situation. All right. <clears throat> now today we are going to be talking about two of the most common, uh, ways to join two ropes together <clears throat> and then stay tuned to the end of the video where I introduce something a little bit different, throw a little bit of a curveball uh, there for you. Okay. All right, so the first one here is the standard uh, fisherman's knot, okay? This is the common one that people are trained or have been trained to use for, you know, many, many years, all right? Now, at the end of all your ropes, you have a stopper knot, okay? Everyone knows this as a stopper knot, a barrel knot, something like that, okay? You have at least a foot of tail. Great. All right, okay, so that's the end of your first rope. Now I'm going to take my second rope. I'm going to feed this up through the center of this here. There we go. And I'm going to give myself a good amount of rope. I'm going to dye a another barrel knot, but just encompassing this here. Okay. There we go. Tighten that down, pull these down and see what happens. All right. Okay. So, here I've kind of tied it a little bit wonky and we'll talk about that here. So when you tie this for inspection purposes, okay, I'm going to have an X and two straight lines. So it means that when I tied it, I kind of went the wrong way. Not a big deal. Okay. Loosen this off and just go the other direction. Okay. So I went that direction. Now I'm going to go this direction. Okay. Tighten that down, cinch this down. <clears throat> okay. All right. So now you can see it's very well set. Okay. So I have two X's and then on this side, I have four straight lines. All right. Now that's the most common way to tie uh, two ropes together in the rope access and, and fire rescue uh, industries. Now the benefit is you don't have to question it. It's super strong, super durable, great shock absorption, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Great. Awesome. However, a major disadvantage, and this here is why I personally do not prompt people to use this. And that it has everything to do with when this tightens down, good luck trying to untie it. It absolutely sucks. If you can untie it, good for you. But 
I don't want to fight with it that long. Don't care. Okay, so this is definitely not something that I prompt people to use, but it is more than adequate and it does just fine. Okay, so if you haven't done this, okay, just think about if you're using a, a scaffold knots to the end of your cow's tails, how tight those knots get. Well, think of this as two of those together and consider how crappy that's going to be to untie. All right, so let's dive into the second option. All right, so we're gonna dive into the second option here, and this here is a retrace figure eight. Now, if you haven't seen my level one uh, knots video, I'm gonna link that up in the corner here, so go check that out after this video, but I'm um, gonna dive into it. So, you know, at the end of all your ropes, you have stopper knots. Well, say that you have a figure eight as your stopper knot. Okay, you got your uh, one foot of distance there for the tail. Now with this, all I'm gonna do is the exact same thing as what I did last time, kind of, and I'm just gonna retrace this figure eight. So let's retrace this figure eight. There we go. Okay, so now I have good distance there, good distance there, at least those two fists, okay? Um, now the great thing about this knot is, you know, we tie figure eights everywhere, tie figure nines, um, you load them, you can untie them, and that's the big benefit here when we're using these knots, is they, no matter how tight they are, you'll still be able to untie them. So this is why I prompt people to use uh, retrace figure eight for this uh, application. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to throw a little curveball at you, and that's me here tying an alpine butterfly uh, no matter what rope no matter what knot you decide to join your two ropes together but when you implement this with an alpine butterfly this does a lot of different things one big thing is it doesn't put tension on the knot that you joined the two ropes together with okay so are you going to be able to untie it if it doesn't have weight on it? Absolutely. Super beneficial there. Secondly, this adds a point of attachment for you to bump your back up. So you're climbing up, you're coming down, you take a cow's tail, clip it on in there, okay? And then you take your back up, move it past the knot, and continue on your day, all right? So, you know, Next time you have to join two ropes together, slap a little alpine butterfly in there and then see the conversation, see what people have to say about it. Um, but this is what I'm teaching people. This is what I want to see. Um, and it's just the ease of operation for you and the technicians on your crew, uh, implementing another knot that people can attach to. I know that, you know, the alpine butterfly symbolizes danger. Um, symbolizes damaged rope, but if it's tied in there, you have communication why it's there, you understand that you are allowed to clip into this. All right, well, thank you very much for tuning into today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. These are the two most common ways to join ropes together in the rope axis and in the fire industry here in North America. Anyways, if you do something different or if you've implemented the Alpine Butterfly in this uh, situation, please let me know in the comments below. Love to have a conversation about this. And, you know, let me know what you're doing. If you're doing something totally different, um, you know, we're all here to learn. All right. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button. It shows me that you want to see more of this content. If you haven't, subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell for notifications as I put out new content every Sunday. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts and I'll see you on the next one.